Hi everyone, I'm Eric Kimball and today I have uh, something special for you. I'm going to show you how to make your own Bright Betty Bama lamp, just like you see right here. This is an emergency lighting device in a jar and emergency lighting devices, oil lamps in a jar like you see here are not a new idea, but this is superior to anything that you can buy. I'm going to show you how to make it. When the electricity goes off and it goes off fairly frequently. We live in a rural area and it usually goes off at night. So we have eight of these jars in the pantry with the matches right in the handle. And we immediately go to the pantry and light the jars. We can carry them around the house. I can read the newspaper. I can read a book. Back in 2011, this was just a bright Betty. And the name Betty came from the Betty lamps of the 1800s which burned whale oil. And they put out light, but they didn't put out a lot of light. This lamp, fueled with liquid paraffin, liquid paraffin only, is bright. Much brighter than an old Betty. So it's a bright Betty. Now, in recent years, I've added Bama lamp onto it. Because I remember back in the 1970s, when I was a teenager, there was a song, Bright Betty. So yeah, Bright Betty, Bama Lamp. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the different components first. This is just a uh, basic canning jar lid. And this is a drinking glass, which you can find often at thrift stores or yard sales, or just buy them new on Amazon. And here we have the working components. Now, this wick right here is a fiberglass candle wick, it's often called. It was purchased from thewickstore.com, uh, item number 1284. They call it 1 8 inch, but it's, it's bigger than 1 8 inch. And uh, that's ideal. It's ideal for fitting into this wick holder right here, which has been made from a piece of one quarter inch OD soft copper. And this end is flared. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, flaring tools, this is the flaring tool. There's another part here, right here. And uh, uh, you, can, you can find YouTube videos that tell you how to flare soft copper using this tool. So, the uh, copper is cut about an inch long, then flared on one end, and on the bottom end that you see right here, you can see that when this is cut with a tubing cutter, it reduces the diameter just a little bit, and that's good. That's what you want because that fits that allows this wick to fit without slipping and sliding up and you know you can adjust it and it'll hold so to put the wick in you got to kind of twist it a little from the top pull it through the wick is about a foot long and you get it so that it's about an eighth of an inch sticking up like that and that'll give you a nice flame now if you put the wick up more you'll get a bigger flame but you'll start to get soot so keep it down to the, uh, to the sweet spot, about an eighth of an inch. You can experiment with that. And there will come a time, it doesn't happen fast, but the wick does burn down a little bit, so you'll have to adjust it up, and that's not hard to do. So there you go, you need the copper, you need the wick, and then we have this component here, which is what I'm gonna focus on showing you how to make. You can see this is a spiral, wider at the bottom, smaller at the top, and it has a handle. And this wire is 18 gauge, galvanized steel wire. You can get it at any hardware store. You can also use uh, Romex, if you have some scraps of uh, Romex copper wire, 14 gauge, even 12 gauge will work. Okay, so you need a length of wire about three foot long. Okay, I've got my wire here, I'm gonna unroll a little bit of it. And this copper tube, as I mentioned, is one quarter inch outside diameter. 
So we want a, a, a loop of wire one quarter inch inside diameter to hold that. And we're gonna make that with this one quarter inch drill bit. And we can do that pretty easily by holding the wire along the drill bit like that, then grasping it firmly with a pair of pliers, okay? You can see that, right? I think so. Then we're gonna take, and I'm going to bend the wire around and around that drill bit six or seven times. I've got it right there. I'm gonna get it closer here so you can see that. Whoop, whoop, there we go. All right, and we can take that off, and you can see that right there. And I'm going to take my cutters and snip, whoa, snip that off. We got a nice neat coil. Now in order to make this larger coil, tapered coil, I need a, a special tool. And I have made it right here. I made it with a uh, the part of a tube from a uh, saran wrap like, and then I cut a, cut a piece of wood out of a piece of pine that would slide in there and be tight. And to make sure it stayed tight, I put this screw in. And then I drilled a hole in the center, one quarter inch, okay? And I'm gonna put it in my vise and clamp it down. All right, now this process using this, and it doesn't have to be perfect, it could be a little oblong, is a little bit tricky. We're gonna go back to the drill, we're gonna slide the drill in there, and we're gonna put the drill, come on drill, there we go, we're gonna put it down into the hole, and I've got, I took my knife and I cut a little a little slot here. That, that does help. And it, uh, I'm gonna put just a touch of a bend there so it fits in better, and then we're going to this coil was going around this way. I'm gonna continue in that way, and I'm going to wrap it around about four times. I'm gonna stretch my wire out so that it's easier to work with, and I'm gonna go around one, two, three, four, okay? I got four, four uh, turns on that. And now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna bend up for my handle, okay? Alrighty, so here's what we have at this point, okay? I got lots of wire here. This was longer than 36 inches, this particular piece of wire. So the objective here is now to take this and bend it around, work with it by hand with tools, as needed to make it look like this. And that's the hardest part of this project. Um, you can start by making it a little wider at the bottom and pull it apart, pull it apart, work your way up, curl the, the top in. Uh, that looks like it needs to get curled a little bit. Okay, I'll go off camera here for a few minutes and just mess with this so I don't waste your time. We're looking pretty good here. I've done better and I've done worse, but it's entirely adequate. And you can put your, your wick holder in there and you may want to twist, twist that around to get it straight up, get it facing straight up. Okay, what we're gonna do now is make the handle, the loop handle, and I'm going to unroll more of my wire here. This wire is really flexible, really easy to work with, and you'll be able to just adjust and adjust and adjust with no problem. Now, what I wanna do is set that in there like that. I hold my finger right at the top, and I'm gonna measure seven inches. All right, yeah. Approximately seven. Nice. Now to make the loop, I've got this half inch dowel. Can we focus? Yeah. See, I've drilled a hole through it. Doesn't have to be dead center, but close. One sixteenth inch hole. I'm gonna thread this through there like that. You can have a little stick out, 
like that. It's easier if you got a little sticking out. And then I'm going to start making a loop. Okay. Three or four loops. There's three. And now I'm going to set it in my jar and see where that loop falls. And it's much too high. I'm going to loop it again. Loop it around again. It's probably too low now. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it's too... Let me show you there. See, that's up too high. So we'll un, undo it a little here. Like that. Until we get just the right height. And we can gauge it out, outside like that. We can figure that that's about right. We're in the ballpark right there. Close. All we need is close at this moment. And then we're going to break our loop free. Let's get focused, please. There we go. We're going to snip that off and slide our loop off. See how neat that is? And we'll put it in the jar to see just exactly what we've got. And oh my goodness, look at that. It's, it's dead on. Just, well, I could roll it down a little bit. If I, yeah, the jar, when you put the lid on, it pushes it down a little, but let's see here. Okay. That's below. It's up there where you can easily grab it, but it's below so the lid can be put on. All right. Now, we do some final fussing with it because we want this to, to fit in that, you know, when you just drop it in, we want this to be as centered as possible. We want that bottom coil to be, you know, big enough that it seats nicely. All right, so I'm gonna fuss with this some more. Okay, you can see that's centered quite nice. It's what we want. And the bottom, <laughs> get a hold of that thing there, is just about as big as the uh, opening. So it sits down there real good. Okay. Ooh, there it is. Looking, looking good, real good. Candle lamp oil. It's liquid paraffin. That's all we want. No other fuel. Put three quarters of an inch to an inch in. That's all. All right, that's all you need. Give it a second to work its way up through the wick, or a couple seconds. And take your little box of matches and lighter. Looky there. Beautiful. Let me shut the light off. Yeah, I got a little light coming through the window, but. That puts out good light. Let's take a look up above. See how it spreads all around? Real nice. So there you go, that's the Bright Betty Bama Lamp. Make yourself a bunch of these. Make them for your friends and family to blow them out. It's that simple, it's that nice. And I wish you well making your own Bright Betty Bama Lamps. Oh, bright Betty, Bama Lama. Oh, bright Betty, Bama Lama. Yeah. One last thing, if you've stuck with me this long, I have a very limited supply of the components needed to make these bright Betty Bama lamps. I have wire with a uh, copper flared wick holder. And I have wicks, 12 inch long, just the right size. And I'm selling these in uh, groups of four. In other words, enough to make four Bright Betty Bama lamps. They're at my site, planetwhizbang.com. But I have a very limited supply. I don't know if I've, I'll make these parts available anymore. These are actually parts that I bought 11 years ago when I came up with this idea and I thought I was going to, it was going to be a product that I would market. And I, I just never got to it. So I have a bunch of these parts and I'm going to sell what I have. And whether I make more after I've sold what I already have remains to be seen. Go to planetwhizbang.com. Anyway, if these aren't available, I got other stuff. 
that uh, is available there that you can purchase for living a more a hands-on, self-reliant lifestyle. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye.